Hello, welcome back to my YouTube channel. My name is Katie, I'm a mixed media artist and today I'm going to be talking about my 100 day challenge. So I have mentioned this project in a few videos of mine recently and especially in my previous video where I was talking about feeling uninspired with creating art, especially during a daily challenge. But last year I did a whole year of daily art and I did bi-weekly videos where I rounded up the art I was creating and shared those here on my YouTube channel every two weeks so I will leave a playlist up there if you want to see that but I thought we'd do like a throwback to that. I haven't been sharing the artwork I'm doing here on YouTube for my daily art challenge because I'm sharing them every day over on Instagram but I thought we could do a check-in because I'm now 50 days through so we are officially halfway. And I just wanted to do a check-in, talk about how I'm finding it, how it's different from my previous challenge, and share some of my favourite pieces so far. So I've got all my sketchbooks and the pieces I want to talk about here, so I hope you enjoy watching and I'd love to hear your thoughts down below as well. So I'm actually going to start by talking about what I had aimed for for this challenge and if I'm on that track or if I need to realign. When I was doing my year-long challenge I found that I did lose focus a lot and my main aim for that one was to grow my audience, which I definitely did, and to develop as an artist. My challenge for this shorter 100 day project is to push myself as an artist even further and really try and experiment with ideas and really focus in on what is exciting to me as an artist and really push through those ideas and focus in a little bit more, experiment with texture and style and just play. I've named the project 100 Days of Sketchbook Play because I really wanted it to be fun and joyful and I was finding that I wasn't drawing as much. The reason why I wanted to do the daily art challenge both times was to increase the amount of art I was making because to me that's the best way to develop my style and grow as an artist is to keep creating more and more because the more you do the more that you learn. I didn't go for the full year this time because there's quite a lot going on in this year in the summer and so I wanted it to be a little bit shorter but I might do another one in the autumn, we'll see how we go. Like I mentioned in the previous video, there's still been days of feeling uninspired and I think there always will be as an artist but so far I really feel like I have tapped into that playfulness and I do feel like I'm experimenting a lot more. It definitely helps that I do have an audience over on Instagram that has been built and I do feel like I'm a little bit more free with knowing I can do whatever I want and obviously that does come from some privilege there of building my audience last year and knowing I've got this really tight-knit community who will like and support my work which does feel really amazing and it does give me a little bit more creative freedom because I don't have that feeling that my Instagram grid has to be like super clean and super precise with the same style. I do feel like I can mix things up and that's definitely what I've been doing Last year with the daily art challenge I was all over the place still but I did notice when particular artworks didn't get as many likes because it wasn't in like the same style that I know is popular. Whereas this time I'm really trying to do what makes me happy and focus in on that whether it gets the likes or not and that's definitely helped having that freedom and trying to take off the pressure. That's why I called it um, sketchbook play because I really wanted to play with my own thoughts and expand on ideas rather than just doing loads of random different things. Obviously on days where I have less time I'm doing more of that but I do really feel like I'm pushing and developing ideas which is really exciting. So we're going to start with day five which is this double panel spread in my sketchbook. You can see I've earmarked all these pieces but I will put some close-ups over the top. So this is mostly gouache and I used my own references from Somerset that Mitch and I went to a few years ago. This was using some Posca here for the beige and then I think it's gouache for the rest of it with some coloured pencil and neocolour texture on top. But it definitely helped me push forward with this sort of style and you will see this throughout a few of the pieces I'm going to show you because this kind of felt like something unlocked in my brain. I really was happy with the texture I created in these pieces and you'll see like the idea of these sort of landscapes develop as we go through the challenge. The next one I want to show you is very different and is a master study of this Van Gogh piece and this was done on our Patreon live stream. So I did run a Zoom session on my Patreon back in January which was a virtual field trip to the Met Museum in New York. 
Mitch and I went to New York just before Christmas and I was lucky to see a lot of Van Gogh's work in person and I thought it would be really interesting for us to study as a group together on Zoom. I could talk about studying masters a lot, obviously I did a lot of work with Suzanne, with Suzanne. I did a lot of work um, inspired by Suzanne last year and I wanted to try something with Van Gogh. So I really focused in on the mark making and the texture that he managed to create with his lines. That's what I was trying to achieve here, but I didn't use like oils like he did. I actually used Tombos and Neo Colors. I think that was it for this one. So just the two materials. But I was really happy with the energy that came from this piece. It's obviously very different to my usual work. It's not my own style, but I do feel like studying master's work can influence us because it makes us use our materials, our brush pens, are neo colors very differently. I usually do a lot of scribbles, whereas I was really more intentional here on trying to go the same way to create those movements and to create the energy here. So definitely something that I want to practice more of, and I do want to continue doing master studies. I feel like this one was quite successful, and so even if I'm not actively applying these techniques, I think in the future they might come into my work, and I think it's never a waste of time to study the old masters. So following on from that is day 12, and I feel like this is another of the landscape studies that was inspired by the vibes in this piece I just showed you. And again, you'll see some more like this as we go. But this was when I mixed pan pastels with brush pens, so I obviously added on some details with neo colours and colour pencils as well. But all of this down here, this lovely texture that I created in the foreground was because of the pan pastels over the brush pens. And it really smoothed it out, it created such a nice technique and I feel like I was quite scared when I was using pan pastels at first because I didn't know how to use them with my style. So I really did start experimenting with the mixed media and I feel like I found a way to make it work and it feels very me which is very exciting. I also started adding in this like cornflower periwinkle blue and that's definitely become more of a staple in my artwork as well. And it was just an experiment here on trying it in this piece and it worked really nicely so that's something that I've continuously added into my work from this point. There's a lot more energy in this piece, I found the view on Google Maps and I'm just really happy with the texture, this is definitely the type of landscapes I want to continue with. So here's another one in that same sketchbook which is day 16. Again, you can see the similarities with the landscapes. I didn't use pan pastel here but I did use gouache, some neo colours and a lot of pencil texture. Instead of just using the pencils as scribbles I've started using them to build up the softness and the texture here in like the bushes and the grasses and it just works really nicely. I love the vibe of these. These were some photos from Google Maps again and you can see the cornflower blue that I used on the previous landscape coming in here but outlining some of the shapes instead of just as lines. And I just like the atmosphere in these, they were like sunset vibes and I definitely think the warmth comes through. I also started adding on this yellow shade into the background which added a lot of warmth and again I started using that colour a lot more in my pieces which I didn't used to do at all before. So this one isn't in my list to share but I did earmark it just to show the continuation of the landscapes. This was again with pan pastels but with gouache but you can really see the tie-in between this landscape and this one, I feel like you can definitely see the continuation there. This one's a little bit softer, but I did have a lot of fun with it, so I did just want to share that one. And also this one on day 32. I filmed this one as a walkthrough for my patrons, so if you wanted to see the full process and me chatting real time whilst I create this, that's available on my Patreon. But I was really happy with this. Again, I used brush pens and pan pastels with the new colours, colour pencils and a little bit of brush pen as well for some of those darker details, but I was really finding my way with the pan pastels and brush pens and I was really pleased with the end result on this one. The next piece I want to show you is a project that's really come from this 100 day series and it's something that I wasn't expecting, it wasn't planned, I never planned my pieces, I just kind of follow the ideas that I get when I'm creating. And there's a few pieces in this challenge so far that has come from those sparks. So I'm really trying to, like when I'm creating, really focus in on what's exciting me. And then maybe the next day or a few days later, once I've let that idea brood a little bit, continuing it and pulling that thread of inspiration 
and trying to push forward with it. With my daily art challenge before, I was doing totally different things every day. So it feels different this time because I am continuing ideas. And I think that's really pushing me as an artist and I'm hoping for a lot of growth. So I want to share this piece from day 27, which are these greenhouse tests. I have done a few of these now, so I will share those as well. But these were the first ones that I did, which stemmed from this piece here in this sketchbook. So this was just done from a copyright free image on Pexels. And I just really enjoyed the idea of doing a greenhouse. I don't think I've drawn one before, but I wasn't very happy with it. I think I could develop this a bit better. So I just focused in on the greenhouse. Usually I do full scenes, so again this was different for me. And I just did these really quick experiments here, but I'm super pleased with this spread because it kind of started the idea of this greenhouse project, which I do want to make into a print eventually. But at the moment I'm just having fun with it, so I'm not trying to put extra pressure on myself. I'm just playing with materials. So this was a mix of different things in the background, like colour pencils and acrylic inks. And then using like negative space here for the greenhouse frame, a Stabilo Woody for this blue one, um, a more refined negative space one with coloured pencils, and then some white ink over the top here. But just playing with the idea of a greenhouse and all the different ways you could draw it. And this one was really fun. It led to these ones in my other sketchbook because I wanted to because I wanted to try this technique down here with masking fluid. So that idea meant I bought some masking fluid and then I used that on all of these here but with different materials underneath. So again we've got gouache, acrylic ink, some coloured pencils and it was really interesting seeing how the masking fluid worked. It worked really well in the sketchbook which I was pleased with and you can definitely see the continuation here. And then from those pieces, because I did the greenhouse experiments and I was really enjoying it, I wanted to continue it. I did this big piece on day 37. And again, this is very different, but playing with collage, because that was an idea I took from those pieces on how I could try to do the greenhouse again in a different way. And so this one I did film. You can see the process for this one in the pan pastel video, which again, I will link above. But I put down pan pastel as the base, which usually I use on top of gouache or brush pens. This time I just did the pan pastel and worked over the top with some acrylic ink, some neo colours, and I'm really pleased with it. I think this one could work as a print as well. It definitely changed. I really liked it without the frame. I will put a picture up here of how it looks without the frame on top. But adding the frame with the collage, which is just strips of white paper, gave a different sense of scale. It makes the plants way bigger than obviously you'd get an idea of if it didn't have the greenhouse on top. And so I think that's something that's really interesting and definitely something I can play with some more. So we're going to go a little bit out of order now because I want to stick with the greenhouse project. But I did do these ones, which were some brush pen experiments. And again, with the collaged greenhouse frame on top. This time I didn't do it in strips. I just cut it with a scalpel to do one shape. But these were really fun and again a different way to explore the idea. And then because this one down here kind of felt like a coral underwater scene underneath the frame, I then applied that to another experiment for day 46 and that's in my Strathmore mixed media sketchbook. And I created this. And this one, although it looks totally different from all of the other greenhouse work and the greenhouse project experiments I've done so far, this one did stem from that tiny little idea I had where I thought the plants I'd drawn looked like coral. So I did this underwater scene and it's one of my favourite pieces so far. I'm really pleased with the idea and the colourway. I was doing a lot more wet on wet experiments here, which I don't usually do. And I used some natural ink and the Sennelier oil pastels that I bought from my recent haul from London. And that added a lot of gorgeous texture. and. I'm just really pleased with how this one turned out. It feels very playful and that's exactly what I want from these days of sketchbook play. So that one was really exciting to do and I'm not sure where I'm going next. I did do a piece that was extended from that one in my sketchbook here. So you can see because of that experiment with like the coral, I did an underwater scene and a landscape. But I feel like these threads really do link together and I think it's really interesting. Where I'm creating quite a lot of art and doing a piece each day, it's really influencing the next day's work, which is one of the reasons why I don't plan, because 
I don't work like that. I tend to find my inspiration on the day. My brain goes a million miles an hour and does lots of different things. And so if I had like one subject I was trying to follow for the whole hundred days, I would get really bored. And so working in this way and pulling these threads of ideas is working really well for me. The last thread that I want to share is totally different again. And this is for day 24 and 43. And these are some really quick studies of some urban scenes and some shops that I found. And this one was on Google Maps and this one is in a book that I picked up from a charity shop. But this is very different for me. Again, it was when I had less time on the day, so it wasn't linked to any of my other ideas. But I definitely want to expand on this and really push out my comfort zone and do more urban scenes. This one took 12 minutes and this one took 14 and it's mostly done with brush pen and some coloured pencil as well as the big chunky beige Posca marker. Obviously these aren't as popular as my usual landscapes but I had a lot of fun doing them and I definitely want to push out my comfort zone some more for the rest of this challenge. I want to do more full themes, I want to start adding people into them to try and show some narrative and I feel like these are a good start with that because they are out of my comfort zone, but I really enjoyed doing them. And I feel like I'm starting to see my style go into all these different other topics that I'm doing, as well as the safe work that I do with my landscapes. But it's really interesting as I develop as an artist on seeing these threads of my style throughout, and it's really building my confidence as an artist. So that brings us on to like the roundup and where I want to go next with this daily art challenge. I want to continue the greenhouse project, I want to continue my experiments. I don't know where we'll go next. I definitely didn't think I'd be doing underwater scenes based on a greenhouse idea, but that was a really fun one to try, and although I don't think I'm going to do underwater for the final print, I did really enjoy doing the coral experiments and I will keep continuing just probably on another project with the underwater idea. Again, that wasn't something that was in my comfort zone, so I do feel like I'm building up my confidence and trying new things and making it work with my style while still exploring texture and all the things that excite me as an artist. Like I mentioned, I do want to push myself with narrative. I want to start including characters and to do that, I need to start drawing people. So that's probably something I'll do in my spare time until I build up more of my confidence. But I do want to experiment with those in my low pressure sketchbook. The yellow one is my daily art one and the pink one is my low pressure one. I've just done a flip through of the first half of this one here on YouTube and this one I've done a flip through over on Patreon. Because it is low pressure I tend to keep that off of Instagram and off of YouTube so that is only available on my Patreon but it does help to have one that is super low pressure where I can just do like really scribbly experiments. And so that's probably where I'll start with my people work and then build up from there. And hopefully we'll start seeing them in my daily art sketchbook and beyond. So that's definitely something I want to do as well as pushing myself with full scenes. That does scare me a bit, but if I'm doing houses and I'm doing landscapes and I'm doing people, I can try and bring them all together. So that's the idea. But I'm really happy with how this project is going. There's obviously days where I don't want to do it and I wonder why I started it every single day because it is a lot of pressure. So if you are thinking of doing your own daily art challenge, I do recommend this video I filmed last year, which is all about making it work for you. I'm only doing five days a week instead of six like I did last year and I'm not doing seven, that would be way too much for me. And so it feels like a good balance on having the weekend off. But I do recommend watching that video if you need some pointers and some ideas if you are starting your own one. So I hope you enjoyed that chatty catch up. I know it was a lot of me just showing you artwork, but I've been really enjoying this challenge and I wanted to share how I'm feeling with it with you guys. And do let me know what your thoughts are on any of the pieces or if you have been seeing all of my daily art over on Instagram, if there's a piece you really like that I haven't shared here. Thank you so much for watching and I hope to chat with you in the comments. I will see you next Sunday with a new video and I hope you have a lovely week. See you later.